Hey, uh, so yeah, I'm Timur. Um, I cannot talk nearly as quickly as the other people before me because otherwise I'm going to pass out. <laughs> um, so this is about this talk is about ISO IEC fourteen eight eight two, which is not the name of a galaxy. Um, I guess many of you know what the name this is of. Anyone? No, no, it's not something audio. That was the other talk. <laughs> All right, so that's the name of the uh, C++ International Standard, ISO IEC 14.8.8.2. It's, of course, our favorite standard document. It's um, even more awesome than ISO 8601, which is the date and time standard, or ISO 32.8.9, which is the standard for the conduct of snorkeling excursions and recreational diving services. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't reproduce or utilize any part of this document in any form or by any means without prior written permission from ISO, which means that instead of looking at ISO IC 482, you're going to look at N4810, which is pretty much the same, except it has all the new stuff in it, and N4810 actually is a galaxy. So uh, if you go back to the uh, title slide, so you see this down there. So actually, uh, 4810 is the bottom one. It's uh, uh, the uh, one that's uh, interacting a galaxy pair. So, um, but we're not going to talk about um, that. Um, we're going to talk about C++, obviously. So a um, couple of years ago at the ACCU conference, there was the survey that you had to fill in as a participant. And one of the questions was, uh, what's your favorite quote from the standard? So for me, the answer was really obvious. It's this, um, this one right here. Um, I'm not going to read it out loud uh, because there is a beautiful video of Michael Case over here on YouTube reading it out loud much more beautifully than I ever could. So, um, so this is one reason why I like this. The other reason is that there's a limerick just after it, which is probably uh, the most well-known Easter egg in the standard. Um, so, um, yeah, I think this is a beautiful piece of English prose. Um, but there's there's more stuff in there. Um, so, you know, I, I've spent a fair amount of time with this document and um, a couple of years ago I was preparing a talk about how, um, how hardware impacts your performance and things like that and it was about uh, full sharing, like if you have two atomics on the same cache line and you write one and you read the other, you get a cache miss. So, uh, and then yeah, there was this thing that in C++ 17 we introduced that you can actually query the cache line size at compile time and so I looked it up on the standard and I found this um, where basically the example had to deal with uh, cats and dogs that apparently you should be keeping apart. Um, I mean, the standard has an index, so actually um, this is back referenced from the index, but in a very annoyingly inconsistent way. So the cats are referenced as interfering with canines, <laughs> but the dogs are uh, indexed as um, being oblivious to interference. So <laughs> this is really inconsistent, and actually uh, it gets even more inconsistent because some mentions of cat and cats and dogs are not back referenced from the index at, at all. So there is a section about headers where, you know, you have this um, where, I mean, I'm happy to see this because the cat is your friend and the dog isn't, so apparently the person who wrote this was a cat person. But of course it's about headers and now we have modules, so modules are much better, so if you look up the um, section just after which talks about modules, there actually cats and dogs can be friends. So, so this is awesome. Um, yeah, not much oxygen, not much oxygen. <laughs> need to talk slower. Okay, uh, so I was still preparing to talk about atomics, right? And there was this other thing about atomics where um, atomics ignore the padding bits of the uh, type, of the of the underlying type. And then if you do like compare, uh, exchange, it does like a bitwise comparison, but then if you have padding bits, they might be different and get like weird results. So I was trying to look up the um, kind of definition of that in the standard and there was, there was some really weird stuff going on. So. Uh, there were some ponies and uh, Celestia and Luna and 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 uh, some so, but it felt relevant, yeah. So it's you know so so, but I didn't understand what's going on. So I had to like spend a fair amount of research on this. So I, I um, <laughs> you know, I familiarized myself with the, my little pony franchise, and it turned out that um, you know Princess Celestia and Princess Luna are actually the two regal sisters of Equestria, and Celestia is kind of the benevolent ruler the left one and Luna, the right one is kind of her strange sister and the ma main antagonist of the series. So it's, it's really, really deep stuff. Um, <laughs> I didn't quite figure out how the, uh, like the atomic uh, party stuff fits in there. So, but maybe some kind of more senior experienced committee members will know this. If you're in the room, please let me know because I really want to know. 
Um, right, so what else do we have? So we have uh, zombie names, this kind of stuff that's deprecated but still reserved by the implementation. Um, they are back referenced from the index as uh, brains, name set one to eat your. And, and this is actually really interesting because, uh, you know, zombies, they come from Haitian folklore, then they were popularized by George Romero's uh, movies in the 60s. But none of those zombies were, I mean, they were eating bodies, they were eating humans, sometimes corpses, but none of them were really eating brains at that point. So, um, zombies eating brains specifically was uh, introduced actually only in 1985 by the film uh, Return of the Living Dead, which coincidentally is also the same year when the first version of C++ came out. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's interesting. There's more film references. There's like um, Bond here, which refers back to a section about Lambda captures the features number uh, oh, 07. Uh, there's a lot more stuff in there that I don't have to, uh, time to talk about. Um, but this kind of stuff is really confusing. Like, you know, the concept of jokes in general confuses me, and in this context, it's like even more confusing. Um, so, um, the, the places in the standard that I really appreciate is when it's being brutally honest. So, uh, I don't know if some of you maybe have, have seen my, my talk about initialization. So, there was this one thing that um, had to deal with what if you initialize an aggregate, but then you have, um, you have like a direct member initializer in there, and then you have this rule that um, basically, you can't bind a temporary expression if it comes from a default member initializer, but then if you give it a um, value in the constructor, then actually, so, so and there the standard says, so this is kind of the example, and says, well, this one is clearly ill-formed uh, because you're binding, uh, you know, t t uh, tempor um, temporary to a, to, a, uh, const, uh, to, to, to a reference. But then the other one says, um, it's okay, unfortunately. Right, <laughs> so 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 I appreciate this. This is being honest. So this is this is something I understand. So uh, thank you so much for you know all the people who uh, put together this document. It's it's great, and um, thank you all for your attention. And have a great evening. <laughs>